Welcome YouTube. Welcome to Sin City Living. My name is Jason and this is today's episode. Today we are going to talk about dice and craps and we're going to talk about the field bet. Now the field bet is an interesting bet. It is the one right here in front of the don't pass and right before the come bet. And it is interesting for a couple different reasons. One is how it pays. Unlike most bets on the table, the field bet pays even money with a couple small exceptions. You've got the two and the 12. Two always pays double. The 12 will pay either double or triple depending on where you are at. It used to pay triple almost everywhere. Now places have trimmed that down for an extra little bit of house advantage uh, and, it, and it only pays double. And the thing about the field is it looks like a wonderful bet. It's going to pay you on the 2, the 3, the 4, the 9, the 10, the 11, the 12. That's a lot of numbers. And when you break it down, the 5, the 6, the 7, and the 8, only numbers that it doesn't pay, people are going to look at that and go, oh, wow, it pays on everything except four numbers. That's got to be an awesome bet. If it was an awesome bet, it would not be on the table. you got to remember that there is no bet anywhere in a casino that favors the players. This may look fantastic, but... It actually, of course, favors the house. There are 16 ways to win. There are 20 ways to lose. Within craps, with two, two six-sided dice, there are 36 possible combinations of the dice. 16 of them will land in the field. The five, the six, the seven, and the eight, those are the most likely numbers to roll. A seven is gonna roll one in six times. Six out of 36 chances for a seven to roll and everything loses. The, uh, the five, or the six, I mean, has five, five ways to roll. So does the eight. So just between the five, the eight, and the seven, you're already looking at 16 ways to lose. Just as many ways as there are to win. Then when you add the five in, which has four ways to roll, it's 20 ways to lose, 16 ways to win. So it comes to uh, four ways to win, five ways to lose, four, four and nine chance of winning. Slightly below 50%, it's 44.4% for those that are curious. It's not a terrible bet though. Some dealers are really going to discourage players from, from playing the field and to me that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because it's also one of the easiest bets for us to pay. It's because it is a, a uh, player control bet which means that the player will, just, will put the money down, down themselves and the player will pick the money back up themselves. This is literally a fire and forget bet as far as the dealers go. If a couple of players are playing the field and a field number happens to roll, we just come on out, we pay it, and we move on with our lives doing whatever else it is we do. Every so often we'll have a player that'll go, is that mine? And more often than not, especially on a busy table, the dealer is gonna say, I don't know. I don't know because that is a self-service bet. That is not my area of responsibility to keep track of. We just pay it or take it depending on the dice rolls. If the player does not take it, that entire bet is going to be live for the next roll, but the dealers will, will 99.9% .9 of the time make sure to point out to the players, you know, hey, if it lays, it plays in the field, pick up your money before the dice go out and give pe people an opportunity if they're not paying attention. However, as a player, you have to remember dice is a very, very fast game and players need to pay attention to what's going on on the game. If you can't pay attention or you're too distracted to play the game, you're probably better off with blackjack, three card poker, or something that is not a fast paced game with self service bets where the dealers are not going to stop to double check with you. If you're on blackjack and you get paid and you haven't picked it up yet, the dealer is going to say something directly to you before they deal the cards out. Now, if you're still not paying attention, of course, they're just going to keep going and your bet will, will play. But in dice, we may make a few random comments, you know, hey, if it lays, it plays in the field, don't forget to pick up your field bets, or dice getting ready to go, pick up your field bets. Uh, if we know which, which player played a certain bet, we may try and get their attention, but dice is a fast game and we're not going to slow it up for one person that's not paying attention. So if you play the field, make sure that you're paying attention to your bets. Make sure you know where your bets are. The entire betting area here is the field, the whole area. If you're playing over in this spot over here, you don't have to put your bet right there in case of 12 rolls. It is all the field. Put it directly in front of you so it doesn't get mixed up with other players' bets. We see that happen all the time. The player that's playing over here decides they want to put their bet directly on the 11 or directly on the 12. Then you got the player that's playing over here that just does it normal and puts it directly in front of them. 
and then say we've got a player over here that's trying to reach in and put their bet in, but they're one of those that likes to throw their bet instead of put it in there. And now we've got a mix up of bets, especially if, if players aren't paying attention. Which does bring up a second thing as well. One of the, uh, one of the things that dealers do find annoying are the players that, that always want to try and look cool by throwing their bet down. 50% of the time they miss and then they have to reach in there, get their bet and put it in, in the correct spot. And we just roll our eyes because we know it'd be easier if you just reached in the first time and put your bet in. Especially if you're playing, say, the corner over there and you want to decide you want to look cool by doing your little throw. More often than not, you're going to see the player, if the, if the, the dealer, if the player's over there, the dealer's likely to pay it this way. As if they figure if the player wants to throw their bet as far away from them as possible, then they're going to go ahead and pay as far away from the player as possible. Um, and no, the, play, the dealer's not going to help you out in getting your bet. This is the first bet we pay when it comes to numbers up here. So if a nine were to roll, they're going to pay the field, all the field bets, and then we're going to immediately move on to paying the, the come bets and then the place bets. So we see this happen all the time where we've got a few field bets out there and people are getting their bets, but the player, this bet way over here was tossed by the player that's off on this side trying to look cool and it's pretty far away from them. And they're, they're pointing at it and pointing at it, but the dealer's head is down now because they are looking at this and they are in the process of cutting out payouts, of handing out come bets, going to the next player, handing out bets. The, the game keeps on moving. And now the player has to sit there and do the little, little hop, skip, jump, lean all the way out on the table. And typically the dealer will, if this, this starts to occur, typically the dealer will have already told the player at least once, put your bet directly in front of you, it's going to be a lot easier to pick up. Most likely we've helped, helped them retrieve their bet once or twice at this point. And then they keep doing it, keep throwing their bets in there. The dealers are not going to keep slowing down the other players' payouts in the game to keep helping one person that is doing something they just really have no need to be doing. So put your bet in front of you. Make sure you know where your bet is at all times. Put your bet in front of you. And don't, don't play a field bet once the dice have already started moving. Don't put your arm in the way. Some players, yes, will play around with the dice and, and mess around with them. And you've got time to put a, put a bet in. Other players are just going to immediately grab the dice and throw them. can't tell you how many times I have seen the dice bounce off somebody's arm. How many times I've heard the table screaming at a player because they keep putting in their bets late. The field bet is an extraordinarily simple bet. You just put chips out there, that's it. There's no other thought behind it, just put your bet out there. So if you wanna play it, play it early. It's not a great shock to you the dice roll. It's not a great shock to you that we move the dice to the player or that they're gonna be coming in your direction. It's not a great surprise that the next roll is coming. Guarantee you've had time while we've been paying the field, paying the place bets, paying the come bets. So there's been plenty of time to play the field. Waiting until the player has the dice in their hand it just it makes no sense um, so please make sure you bet your your bets early make sure you know where your bets are keep track of your bets and if you do want to let your bet ride stack it up if we pay you and we're sitting there going hey if it lays it plays in the field it lays it plays in the field and you don't say anything at least at the very least say yeah i know i'm just going to let it ride Okay, you know the dealers. The dealer may stack it up for you. you may go, okay, that's that's uh, you know that's that's that player's bet. But a lot of players just completely ignore the dealers. They don't look at them. They don't speak to them. They just stand there. Well, let me give you a little bit of a hint to the cameras. This right here is two people's bets. It does not matter that we've already paid you. So obviously, the, obviously this payout belongs to that bet, so it, therefore it belongs to the same person. When it's set up this way, it's two people's bets. When it's the same person, guess who the second bet is for? It's for the dealers. It's a two-way bet. Players play this, like this, to the cameras, to security, it's a two-way bet. Now, a good dealer is not going to pay this and take it, of course, but if they were to, in fact, most dealers, I don't know any dealers that would do that, but if they were to and it were to go up to security, security might say, well, that was a two-way bet because that's how two-way bets are bet, separated. It's like if you were to bet for the dealer, some people will, will uh, tell the dealers, you know, hey, those, those two whites are yours. 
Okay, cool. Now, a couple reasons why they may do that. They may do it because that part is going to be player control, so they can just keep it going and the dealer will take their winnings. Or they might do it just so they know where their bet is, just so, just so it's all consolidated. But in general, if you're betting for the dealers, it's separate. So if we've paid you and you leave it there, that looks like a dealer bet. Yeah. Like I said, 999 times out of 100, the dealers are, of course, not going to do that to you, especially not a good dealer. But to the cameras, it legitimately does look like two people's bets. So please, if you want to let it ride, reach down there and stack up your bet. Now, let's discuss the field. Let's discuss the field and why some people might play it. Um, Dealers will discourage people from, from betting the field, which again, I, I don't understand why. Uh, sure, there's, there's 16 ways to win, 20 ways to lose, so, it's, so the odds are against you, but the odds are against you on every bet on this table. So singling out the field is just silly. I think some dealers, some dealers do it because they know the player doesn't know the odds and thinks that's actually a winning, um, has a higher chance of winning than losing. So they like to kind of rub players' noses in that, which I don't understand. The, the players haven't gone through a, uh, through a four-week uh, dice course in order to learn the game. So of course they don't know all the ins and outs and all the numbers of it. Um, it's, an, it's an incredibly easy bet to pay, so I don't know why dealers would discourage players from playing it. It's, it's simple. It, it doesn't take us any effort to pay. We just go in, size in, and we're done. Uh, except for the 2 and 12. Sometimes those might get a little bit tricky, and there's a few tricks to uh, to paying those if you have some odd denominations. But in general, it's a very easy bet for us to deal with as a dealer. So by all means, play it. Because again, while the odds are against you, the odds are against you in every bet on the table. At 44.4% chance of winning, I have certainly seen worse odds on a lot of bets, especially on this, this table. But in general, in games everywhere. So this is not the worst bet I've ever seen, not even close. It's not a horrible bet. As a dealer, when I play, my personal issue, the reason I do not play the field, is because it pays even money. I don't like bets that pay even money in craps because there's so many bets that pay better than even money. Why would I want to pay? Why would I want to do even money? Also, it's a one one roll bet. It wins or loses on the next roll. Whereas place bets and come bets, they will stay up there until the win or loss condition comes, which happens to only be two different numbers. Right. The seven is, of course, a loss condition for come bets and for, for place bets. Come bets that have already traveled, that is. And place bets, well, whatever number they are on, it's the win condition. So otherwise, they stay up there. And place bets will continuously win. Field bets are a one roll bet. So I'm not a huge fan of them for that reason either. Um, now, another reason that people will, will play the field bet is because they don't understand dice very well. You get it with a lot of people that play, play uh, quote unquote, street dice. Um, where the, they'll bet the field, um, and these players typically have some, a lot of times will have some sort of ritual attached to it. They'll, um, those are the players that tend to, to sit there and literally stare at the, the shooter and wait until they pick the dice up in their hand and then dart their hand in and bet the field as if that's going to increase their odds in, in some way, shape, or form of winning instead of betting it earlier. Um, or they have a specific spot they want to put it at. And there's, there's certainly nothing wrong with superstition, but of course it's superstition. It doesn't, there's nothing that improves your odds um, other than just the straight rolls of the dice. So um, the problem with the field is, again, four ways to win, nine ways, or five ways to lose, four, nine chance of winning. So if you're going to bet the field every single roll, especially the same amount, you're definitely going to lose. You may hit some nice little streaks. We've all seen those happen where, where the field might roll uh, 8 out of 10, 10 rolls or something along those lines. And it's a nice little streak. And you build up a little bit. But if you continuously play the field every single roll, uh, or if you're playing the same amount here uh, continuously, you're going to lose over the course of time. Uh, nobody wins. And it's, it's going to be pretty quick. The field is one of the fastest ways we see people get themselves wiped out because they tend to, do, they tend to be what we call field chunkers, where they're, they're chunking in large amounts or, or decent sized stacks um, on a one roll bet. Um, so if you're going to play the field, to me, I'm not going to say I never play the field because I do. To me, the field is a fun one to play when you're, you're doing um, 
uh, the rest of your bets, your place bets, your combat, stuff like that. Then you're going to play the field. Every so often you might throw something in the field just for fun. I've got a, I've got a nice little stack of, uh, of ones I want to use or, you know, I'm on, a, I'm on a hot roll. I've pressed up my bets a little bit. Let me throw five, ten bucks in there just in case there's two or twelve rolls when, when, uh, um, when the bets are happening. Then, of course, you have the Martingale players. Bet 10 bucks. Oh, that loses. Okay, great. Now I'm going to bet 20 bucks. Oh, that loses. Okay, great. Now I'm going to bet 40 bucks. Oh, that loses. Great. Guess what? Now we're going to bet 80 bucks. If Martingale was a winning strategy, casinos would not be open because everybody would be doing it and everybody would be winning. Um, you know, I'm sure you're going to win sometimes. We have seen people because that, that Martingale, that doubling up every single time, that adds up super, 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 super fast. So we've all seen players hit the table max and lose, and now they've lost thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars trying to win 10 bucks on a Martingale strategy. So that strategy will not work. Well, now, one interesting strategy I have come across the player that bets a hundred dollars if it wins they let it ride if it wins again they let it ride when it wins again they take it down so they have made seven hundred dollar profit off their initial hundred dollars now let's Let's examine this. So, needs to win once. What are the odds of winning one time? Four out of nine. We've already talked about that. So, 44.4%. But it needs to win a second time. Two times in a row. Well, what are the odds of it hitting two times in a row? Well, those odds would be 16 out of 81 for a 19.75% chance. You have less than a 1 in 5 chance of that hitting two times in a row. But this strategy needs it to hit three times in a row. At the third time, we're going to take it down to that 100 again. What are the odds of it winning three times in a row? 8.8%. A little bit less than 1 in 11 tries to win 700 bucks. 800 if we were to take the entire thing down. It would, it would be at 800. You would have profited 700. 1 in 11. 1 in 11 to get paid seven to one. Hmm. Again, I've seen worse odds, but I've even, uh, I won't say I've played this, but while I'm dealing, I've, I've uh, in my head, tried to keep track of how many times that, that three hits in a row happens versus how many times you lose the hundred, have to go back in, lose the hundred, maybe, maybe win it, get paid, lose that, so I have to go back down to a hundred. Um, and yeah, I have not had a, uh, in my head at least, I have not had the, uh, a winning streak on on this method last long not last me longer than about 15 minutes uh, but it's an it's an interesting strategy it's an amusing strategy uh, there are definitely other field strategies and and methods that we will talk about in further videos i just want to do an overview and introduction in the field for players that are not super familiar with it thank you for watching please hit the like and subscribe buttons and we will catch you next time